question comes from the gamer12345. He says, what trade should we make before the deadline? This is a great question. Um, we know for a fact that there are four players on the market right now. We have Dwayne Brown, the tackle from the Texans, T.Y. Hilton from the Colts, Martavis Bryant from the Steelers, um, and Eric Ebron from the Lions. Now, Martavis was rumored to be off of the trade block. Mike Tomlin obviously gave a press conference regarding Martavis Bryant's status and basically said that he's not on the trade block. But after Juju Smith-Schuster's great game that he had on Sunday night, I think they're going to be a little bit more less reluctant to trade him. So I would assume he's on the block. But you talk about all four of those guys. I think the one that really stands out in terms of that's the guy is Dwayne Brown. This offensive line has struggled pr- to protect the quarterback at ev- at any point in this season. Pass protection has been extremely poor. Um, you know, we've got people flying in free on blitzes, everything. Now, a lot of that has to do with busted protections. You know, running backs not doing their job, not blocking the backer, not blocking the corner coming off the edge. But there are the other times where the, either the guards really don't perform up to stuff and then you have obviously uh laramie tonsil and juan james who i'm i i to be honest with you i'm fairly confident that they're gonna get right on the right track for the rest of the year i I, they're both super talented players i i feel like they will get on track but i think where the dolphins need is a guard to help them in the running game to help them in the passing game uh to give jay cutler more time because he has less pressure coming up the middle at him i think that'll help a lot so dwayne brown can play guard that is that would be an interesting trade. Dwayne Brown is definitely at the latter stages of his career, so I would be reluctant to give up somebody who's younger, who's got more promise, who might be able to develop into something really, really good, because you're only going to have Dwayne Brown for maybe a couple more years, if that, and especially since the off is coming up, I don't see him staying on the football team for that long. So that's an interesting trade, because on the one hand, we're getting a player that is going to help us in the offensive line, be a little bit more physical up front, really help J.H.I. in the running game. And then on the other hand, he's just going to be a short-term band-aid that's going to be ripped off, ripped off in the offseason. So it, it, it's 50-50. Uh, when you talk about the other three, Eric Ebron, Martavis, and T.Y. Hilton, I know fans love their skill positions. Why, well, obviously, I love skill position players. They're flashy, obviously, more of a flashy trade. Um, you know, er- Eric Ebron has struggled with his hands throughout his career. He's a good route runner. He does his job well. Uh, but when he's open, he just doesn't catch the football. That's a little... I don't know if that is the road we want to go down, but obviously Julius Thomas hasn't looked the, like the most athletic tight end since he's been a Dolphin, so maybe that's somewhere Adam Gase wants to explore uh, there. Then you go on to T.Y. Hilton and Martavis. Kenny Stills is very similar to T.Y. Hilton, so you're basically getting another Kenny Stills. He's a deep threat, great route runner, great hands. He's a good 50-50 ball guy. He's got strong, strong hands. He's a ball hawk, great red zone target as well. He might be an area that Adam Gase goes down because he definitely wants more consistency at receiver, and right now we're not getting it, so that might be a good road to go down. And then when you look at Martavis, I think he'd probably, out of the skill positions, be the best one to, to trade for because he, he gives this Dolphins offense a different type of a player. T.Y. Hilton's very similar. He's a smaller guy. He's very similar to Jarvis and uh, Kenny, and he mostly plays in the slot. So you don't really want to have two great slot receivers on one team. I would have, I'd rather have another dominant outside receiver, and Martavis can, is capable of doing that. Um, now, the locker room issues, that's a whole nother deal. Um, but again, I think Dwayne Brown would probably be the more likely one, the more realistic one, even though you could make an argument that nothing's probably going to happen. But apparently the rumors are the Dolphins are active in trade, uh, trade talks. Now, it depends on what the trade is for. Uh, the other rumor is is that the Dolphins are not willing to give up draft picks, so it's going to be a player for a player exchange. But again, I think the best trade would probably be Dwayne Brown from the Texans in terms of skill positions. If you're looking for that, Martavis, I think, is the best receiver to go with. This question comes from Ronald. He says, what do you think the starter changes on offense will be? So if you guys don't know, Adam Gay said there are going to be significant changes along the offense because of the lack of preparation and our best players. So it's going to be interesting to see what those changes are. Um, this is a great question. Um, I would like, you know, Ronald makes a great suggestion down in the comment section below. That's a, probably the perfect answer for this is Isaac Asiata. You know, Isaac Asiata 
you know, in the draft was projected to be a second round pick. He comes from Utah, it comes from a pro style offense, which means that he gets blocking schemes on the next level. Most of these guys come from spread offenses, and the translation to the NFL is really, really hard. So that's why you see most of the offensive linemen come from the Big Ten and places like that that run pro style offenses because they get it when they translate to the next level. So Isaac Asiata comes from that. Um, obviously, Utah is infamous at this point for pr- producing very, 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 very talented players uh, that come to the NFL. And I like Isaac Asiata. Obviously, at the at the time, he was a steal because he was again he was projected to be a second round pick. He go, I think he, what do we got him in the fifth round? Um, only been disappointed in him so far this season. He hasn't got any playing time. Um, and I don't know what the reasons are for that. Uh, I don't know. I honestly don't know. I couldn't tell you guys. But you know, I think he's a physical, smash mouth player, and the best thing he did at Utah was run block. So that's exactly what we need. We need holes to open up for JJ. He's a physical dude. He blows people off the ball when you watch him at Utah. I mean, he just moves people, and he's a great puller. I mean, he can pull with the best of them. So he's everything you would want in this offense. That's why we drafted him. He's a great fit in this scheme. So I think the probably the most likely one would be along the offensive line whether that's from a trade or Isaac Asiata starts but when you talk about the skill position players that's a whole nother thing because I really don't see any changes being had um when you talk about the receivers Adam Gase you know especially the running backs when you talk about the receivers though and will there be significant changes along that and that aspect when you look at the players that are behind uh, Kenny Stills, Juice Landry, and Devontae Parker. Leontay Crew and Jakeem Grant, the biggest knocks on them is the playbook. They haven't been prepared enough. Adam Gase doesn't trust them to be out there on a consistent basis, or you would see them be out there more on, on more of a consistent basis. So along the receiver core, I really don't see any major changes happening. Now, will he just go with it? I, I think he will. And I think, again, it'll send a message to the team, which I think needs to happen, um, especially if they're not working hard enough that regardless i don't care who you are how much money you're getting paid you're gonna sit and that will that will work so we'll see what happens but i don't think any receivers will change now when you talk about the running backs it's even less likely because Kenyon drake the reason he isn't getting any playing time is because he doesn't know the playbook and adam gates doesn't trust him adam gates is set in press conference he just doesn't trust him about skill positions i honestly don't see any major changes happening unless there's a big trade for a receiver or a running back or a tight end. I first of all, JJ. I don't blame any of this on him. He 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 did listen. He needs to be better in the. On, he's not a third down running back. I don't even know why we continue to try at this point. He's just not. So I really don't blame half the stuff on Jay. Um, so excluding him, there definitely needs to be changes in the receiver core, and there definitely needs to be changes along the offensive line. And I don't see the skill positions being changed, but I think the most likely position that will be changed is guard and I would lo- I would look for Isaac to be that guy. This question comes from Alumide. He says, I know it's been said before, but it's time to call Brandon Albert. This could very well be the most the worst talent in Miami offense in history. Thoughts. Now talent's not the issue, it's execution. Talent has nothing to do with this. It's execution, it's preparation, it's all of that stuff. Because that's the only way it could... I mean, when we talk about the talent on this offense, that's the only explanation for it. It's the only explanation for it. And obviously, football being successful at football is more than talent, and that's a big part of the game that not a lot of people take into account for. So that's the reason the Dolphins offense is struggling. Now, at the guard position, yes, you can make an argument that talent is an issue. Now, what Brandon Albert... now. You know, he played, uh, what did he play, college? I can't remember, I think he was he was a volunteer at Tennessee. So, coming out of college, when he was drafted by the Chiefs, he played guard. And I think even his rookie year he played guard. I, I can't remember. But um, ever since then, he's been very reluctant to play guard. He's actually made it, he's said it out in the open that he doesn't want to play guard. He wants to play tackle. Really don't see this happening. Even if the Dolphins called him and wanted him to come back, he would want to play guard. Now, some people want to say, or excuse me, he would, he would want to play tackle. Now, some people would say, okay, then let's move Laramie to tackle. I don't think that's a good idea. Laramie is going to be the tackle for the Dolphins for the next 15 years. Like this, he's very, just because he's struggling through the first half of the season doesn't mean all hope is lost on Laramie Tunsil. He will figure it out, and I think he'll figure figure it out for the rest of the year. He needs to develop and stay there. 
So that's a number one priority. We don't need to go out and get an old man who is going to be on the team for the, like the next two months, and then he's going to be off the team in the off season. That's not a good idea. He needs to stay there and develop for the future. So Larry needs to stay there. Brandon Albert doesn't want to play guard. It's not going to happen. This question comes from Axel. He says, Skaggs, do you think Adam Gase should relinquish his duties as an offensive coordinator like Ben McAdoo with the Giants? Absolutely not. The best thing Ben McAdoo did, and the reason he got the head coaching job, among other reasons, um, because that was basically the last, uh, that was the last choice for the Giants because they wanted Adam Gase and he chose us, but... um, Ben McAdoo, the best thing he did to become a head coach was the fact that he was a really good play caller. Um, and the year, the reason he got the head coaching job is he really, Eli Manning had a great year when Ben McAdoo took over the uh, offensive play calling, and that's why he was promoted to head coach. Um, and the offense was really cooking when he was the head coach. People forget the offense was great in New York, and then they went out and bought all of those defenders, and then the defense became great, but the, the uh, offense kind of went downhill. And that kind of, it went downhill. So the worst thing that Ben McAdoo could have done was relinquish his play calling uh, duties because that's the, his strength as a coach. When you look at Andy Reid, he, he's still a head coach and he still calls plays. Why does he call plays? Because that's what he's really good at. Adam Gase, the best thing that he's good at, that's the reason he's a head coach right now, is because he called the, his play calling ability. He's probably the best, second best at it in the league, in my opinion. Even though the offense isn't performing up to their the level that they can perform up to, Adam Gase is still a great head coach and a great play caller. The worst thing Adam could do, the worst thing Adam could do is allow Clyde. Not that, not that Clyde's not a good. Uh, coach but Adam is one of the best play callers in the league he did it for many years it's not like this is like he did it on a consistent basis this has to do with the players this has to do with them and Adam Gase needs to Adam Gase needs to do what he thinks is right he has made too many compromises in terms of the players not understanding his scheme He's made way too many compromises. He needs to put the players in there that understand what he's doing and that can execute the play that is called. When that happens, this offense will get back on track. It has nothing to do with the play calling. This question comes from Eleven. Uh, He says, Adam Gase has mentioned for the second time this year that he had to simplify the offense because key players on the team are not taking their work home and and not studying the offense. Is it a football IQ issue or having a young team that that leans too much on their athleticism instead of zeroing in on the details? I think when you look at all the players on this team, they're so talented and they've had so much success in the past. We talk about J.H.I. who just exploded last year. When you talk about Juice Landry, who's been a very consistent player over his tenure here in Miami. When you talk about Kenny, who had a lot of success in New Orleans. Um, and when you talk about DP, who was a dominant college receiver at Louisville. I think all of these players think that they can just show up and it comes to them. Um, you make the point that they rely too much on athleticism. I don't think it's too much on athleticism. I think they just sometimes, you know, football, again, I, not to get into the weeds of this, but football is more than just being a great athlete. Football is a very, very it, you have, it takes a lot of mental toughness, and you have to be a smart human being to play football at a high level. You have Steve Largent, who's not athletic at all and could barely make a football team, but you can understand what beats zone coverage and what beats man coverage, and you can work on your technique and be a great player in this league. Same thing with Wes Welker. He wasn't gifted. He wasn't tall. He wasn't fast. He was just a very smart football player. So it's more than just being gifted athletically. It's executing the X and O's. If you don't understand what you're doing out there, then what are you doing out there? See, it's a football cliche, but it's true. If you don't know what you're doing, you don't understand what coverages are and how to beat them and what the weaknesses of the opponent that you're playing that's across from you, doesn't matter how talented you are. You could be Calvin Johnson. It's not going to work. You need to understand what the other team is trying to do to you and what you're doing as an offense. That way, all 11 players can execute at the same time because people forget it's if, you, if one guy messes up on a field, then the entire thing is broken. So it's very important that you understand the X's and O's of football. And yes, I do think a lot of that has to do with the, all of these guys have had success and they're very gifted and they're very talented. And maybe that gets too, that, you know, their ego kind of blows up a little bit and maybe they think they can just show up. I don't know what it is, 
But Adam Gates knows what he's talking about, and they need to listen. Guys, that has been the fan Q&A for this week. I know it was a short one, like last week, but we have a lot of other questions to be answered in the podcast, so keep asking them. So when the podcast comes around, we have a ch- chalk thing. We have something that, you know, a lot of questions to talk about, so the podcast is longer. Um... That is going to be it, guys. I am Skag1383. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you guys in the next one.